Hey, 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 everybody. I'm your host, Grande Gato. Also, I'm with the Big Cat. My cool cat, what's up? If you're rocking with the Big Cat today, we're here to talk about Carolina Panthers draft prospect, Ross Blacklock from TCU. But first, before we get started, do you love the Carolina Panthers like I love the Carolina Panthers? Yes? No? Maybe? Do you love the Carolina Panthers like I love the Carolina Panthers? It is good. If you love the Carolina Panthers, like Panthers give me that dab. We're here to talk about Ross Blacklock from TCU. Could he be the next diamond in the rough? Let's get into it. Here we go. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss the video. Now, also at the bottom, once you hit that subscribe button, take the bell and click it always. Hit it to always, all right? That way you'll get notified every time I put something out. Now, let's talk about Ross Blacklock from TCU Defensive Tackle. When I say, listen, I know I'm not waiting to the end of the video to tell you how I feel about him. We got to get him. We, we got to get him. We, we got to get him. I want him. I need them. I need them in my life. I got to have them. Listen, but we can trade back and get them, okay? This guy, well, let me ask you this. 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 If I told you you can have a 21-year-old Grady Jarrett, and I, I hate the Falcons. I hate the Falcons, but I have the utmost respect for Grady Jarrett. To me, he should have been the Super Bowl MVP if they would have beat the uh, New England Patriots. But what if I told you you could have that a 21-year-old uh, version of him? Okay, that's not satisfying enough. What if I told you you could have a 21-year-old version of Vince Wilfork? He's that damn good. And listen, even though I would say you have a 21-year-old version of him, he's raw, okay? Now he's raw, but the juice that he pikes is, is, is astronomical. Them first three steps off the line of scrimmage is a fucking gut check for any offensive lineman, one-on-one, Two on one, however you want to do. It's a gut check. Now, with that being said, some NFL draft pros I mean, some NFL draft insiders are comparing him to uh, Gerald McCoy when he first got started. So, would you take a Gerald McCoy when he first got started? He's that damn good, y'all. If you look at the screen right here, according to the NFL Combine, my man weighs in at six. Th uh, he's six three, weighs in at 290, 32 inch arms, nine inch hands, uh, nine inch hand span. Also, they have him rated as a 6.39 prospect, which means, according to them, that he will be a starter within the first two seasons. Also, if you look at his measurables, you'll see him running a 4.9 and a 40 unofficial. Um, he didn't do a bench press, vertical jump of 29 inches, uh, 107 broad jump, three cone drill, 7.77, and the 20 yard shorter shut off 4.6. Now, one thing I love about this guy is, again, his first three steps are magnificent he, he blows you away i mean he's a torpedo six foot three 305 or what, six foot three 290 uh my man plays every bit of that okay he's so damn powerful so damn strong he's a mule in there and he stops the run now with that being said he's raw okay he's a baby 21 years old sometimes he doesn't bring his feet sometimes he does this thing right here where he just flies in the backfield because he's so strong, he, th he thinks he can just fly in the backfield without reading shit, and that leads to open lanes, and that leads to big runs and shit like that. Also, he's not the best pass rusher. But that's okay. That's okay, baby. Listen, what did I tell you guys before? What, what, what have the big cat always been saying? I don't want no hybrid guy on the defensive line. Uh, uh, well, not in the interior defensive line. You can have hybrid defensive ends, but that interior better be fat-nosed motherfuckers that can stop shit in the run. All right? And this guy's one of them, man. He's, he's, he's amazing. Now, as a defensive lineman, I want you to follow my three-step process as seen on TV. Here's what you need to do as a defensive lineman. The first thing you need to do, you need to pop and extend. Lesson one, pop and extend. Lesson two, when you got that offensive lineman extended, you need to be looking. Where is the ball? Find the ball. Step three as a defensive lineman. After you find the ball, after you, I mean, after you pop, after you find the ball, disengage. Fight across the face, get loose, make the play. Often there are times where he skips a step. Sometimes he'll just he'll go pop, and then he'll just <laughs> and then he'll disengage because he's so damn strong. You can't just pop and disengage without looking for the ball because the ball will be going right by your ass. So there's times where he he misses a step out of my three step as seen by TV plan. Um, good guy, man. I mean, 21 years. He's a baby, man. He's a baby. If now, if we better trade back and get this guy, we better trade back and get him. We better. 
all right, y'all don't want to hear this shit. The guy is nasty when it comes to stopping the run. And even though he has room to grow, even though he's not the not the best pass rusher, even though he's stiff in the hips at times, he's, he's not as fluent as running up and down the line of scrimmage as an athletic, a more athletic uh, a Ken Law or something like that. I want him. He's a baby. Put him in there. Let that nigga learn from experience. We'll be all right. Matt Rule, pull the trigger. Trade bike. Let's get this guy, man. Let me show you what I seen on tape against Oklahoma State. So on his first play, you're going to see how my man, he destroys zone blocking schemes. Oh, nasty. He destroys it. And he takes my three-step process. If you look up on your screen right here, you'll see, as I stated before, first thing you need to do is pop. Second thing you need to do is look for the ball. Third thing you need to do is disengage. And he does it beautiful right here. Now, he doesn't do this all the time because he's raw and he relies on his strength a lot. But when he puts it together, backed up in their own uh, red zone, Oklahoma State is, he fights off the block, he looks for the ball, and he disengages at the right time. He's a low man. Look at, look at the guy blocking. Look at the guard blocking him. <laughs> he, don't know what to, he don't know what the shit to do. Look at it. Zone block his game. He can't handle him. And at the last second, he sh shocks him. He shucks him at the last second. Get rid of him. Once you find that ball, once you locate it, get off the block, make the play. Beautiful thing. Hell of a run stuffer. That boy is good. On so this next play, you're going to see where he skips a step. He doesn't get extension. He allows for the offensive lineman to get up in his shit. And what you're going to see is he's so big and so strong, he's able to get past that anyway. He explodes on the point of contact. He finds the ball, makes the play. If you look up on your screen right here, I don't recommend him doing this all the time, but again, he's a low man. He's a low man. He's, he's, he's about a, look, look at this. Finds the ball and explodes through the point of contact. I would like for him to get more separation there. Extend out that goddamn uh, guard, but instead, listen, he convicts. Listen, if he's going to commit to wherever he commits to and he see where the ball is, fine, I'm okay with it. I'll live with it. You better be right. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're going to commit to not getting extension, because you're so big and so strong, you just lower your shoulders down and fire through. I'll take it every now and then. But that can be costly, and it will be costly. I'm going to show you here later on down the line of scrimmage. But he's so big, man. So strong, so massive. Once he commits to wherever the ball's going, he finds it. It's blown past the offensive line. They can't do nothing with him. And listen, man. He's, a, he's just hard to deal with, man. And this is what we need. The last two years, we've been crummy up front. Okay, that hybrid shit, you know, having a bunch of hybrid guys that can, you know, be Jesus, Moses, and, 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 and you know, Confucius, that's cute. But I want dirty dogs in the front. Dirty dogs, and if you could do one thing well and stop the run, that's fine. I'll let my outside guys pass rush you. Let my defense ends pass rush you. But that interior, I want nasty hog mollies up there. I want two, two McDonald bag carrying motherfuckers in the middle. And he's one of them, man. And he's raw. He's a baby. He can make these plays. He's nasty. Yes. So on this next play, I got to ask you, are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? He's the truth. Look up on your screen right here. The three-step process is back in effect. Guess what he does? Get extension. Guess what? He finds the ball. He disengages. If you look on your screen right there, he gets extension. He finds the ball. He disengages. He gets extension. Finds the ball. Disengages from the block. Make the play. We need him. We need him, we need him, we need him. We need him, we need him. Drano can clock better than this shit. He is a stuffer. He's a jalapeno. Look at this, look at him. Look at this. Look at that there. When he executes this three-step process that every defensive lineman in the country should be doing, by the way, I mean, he's hard to stop. All this from a 21-year-old stud. Jesus Christ, man, listen. And you think, if you, if anybody out there think we shouldn't trade back and get this guy, you're slap crazy. No need to reach for, for a, a potential high paid or over, you know, over, I don't want to say overrated. Ain't no need to reach for a, a, a highly guy. A, uh, how can I say this? I don't want to, let me be respectful. I don't want us reaching for a guy that we can get the same potential out of as later. Let's, let's just keep it like that, okay? I don't want to disrespect nobody, but this guy's the truth. Message. So moving on, man, I'm going to continue to sing this guy's praises, man, and how difficult it is. And on this play, he looks like a young Gerald McCoy. Let, let's be honest. I think some of the scouts did their homework very well on this guy. If you look on your screen right here, he literally just lunges into the offensive guard because he's so sure of where the play is going. 
Now, again, I, I don't necessarily recommend him doing that, again, because at times in the game, and you'll see here shortly where when you're not reading your keys, you're just firing up field, and then you're fighting across. I got to give him to that. You fire up field, fight across, and make the play hell of a play. This right here just speaks to how big and how aggressive he is, okay? So once he commits to wherever the ball's going, and if he gets it right, you're in trouble, okay? Like a young Gerald McCoy. When Gerald McCoy fall off, fire off that line of scrimmage, there was nothing you could do with Gerald McCoy back in the day, okay? Now, with that being said, I just I want him to follow my three-step plan, okay? Get your extension, find the ball, and get rid of Sometimes he just relies on his speed. He relies on his strength within the first three steps, and he just flies up there. And it's, it, I mean, it works. It works. At time, it works. But at time, it costs a lot, man. You got to be disciplined. Extension, find the ball, and then disengage. But right here, beautiful thing right here. Just a load to deal with. Again, nobody wants to – listen, man, look. Six foot three, 300 pounds, moving that fast. This poor number 78 was getting abused all game in his Oklahoma State tape. And uh, <laughs> it continues right here. He's a fighter now. He's an interior fighter, man. He's built for this shit. And he's a puppy. He's young. He's young, man. I mean, my mouth is salivating for the potential. I mean, a Grady Jarrett, a Vince Wilford, or even a young Gerald McCoy. Winning. All right, y'all. So we got to tone it down a notch. We sung his praises all video long so far. Now we got to get into some of the some of the difficult stuff. If you look up on your screen right here, again, he's abusing number 78. But he can't get off the block. And yes, he did get he get held uh, on his play right here. But if you look back a couple clips ago, my man got held and was able to fight fight across there. And the reason why he wasn't able to do it here is because he's not bringing his feet. Not only is he not bringing his feet, he, he's stiff in the hips, man. He's not as athletic as uh, a Ken Law or, or some other defensive tackles in this draft. And, you know, he, he's strong enough to fight across there, even though he did get hit, uh, hold on that play right there. Um, he tends to just, you know, once he beats this guy, sticks his arm out and just try to catch cloth and then use his strength to drag you down. That doesn't work against everybody, man. That doesn't always work. Bring your feet, man. Lower your hips. I mean, you did the dirty work. You, you got number 78 off balance. And again, I mean, I, I like to think that Ho had something more to do with it. But there were a couple times throughout the game where this, this is what happens, man. You know what I mean? So bring your feet. He's not the most flexible defensive tackle in the world. I mean, he is what he is. He's a big, strong guy that can really mess stuff up. But also, man, you know, with that quickness, sometimes it gets him in troubles, man. You know, he'll pick a gap, and he'll gas and fire up field. And if you look up here, again, he gets off the block. It gets hold a little bit. I mean, that's kind of iffy, man. I, I may be reaching on that one. But I got to say, I've seen plays where he get held just like that and still destroy. Blow your hips, man. Fight through the block. Make the play. Ah, damn. See, one thing that he does really well is when he gets out of position sometimes, he knows how to recover pretty good. If you look on your screen right here, again, this is a simply a, a, a zone blocking scheme right here. He overruns it, but he doesn't stop, man. He comes back, he makes the play, and that's what you like, okay? Now, every game is not going to be perfect. There are going to be plays like this where you misdiagnose it, you overrun the play, but the object of the game is to fight until the end of the whistle, get back in the play if you get a chance to, and that's what he did, man, so... Kudos to him for not giving up and say, you know what, I I'm just going to get washed out to the sidelines, way to fight back, and uh, make the play. <laughs> <laughs> so on this next play, you're going to see where he lacks a little bit of awareness. If you look up on your screen right here, again, the three-step solution is to get extension, find the ball, and disengage. Right here, he's getting extension, but he's not looking for the ball. He has his head in the offensive lineman's chest. He's looking down, just trying to bull rush him to the back. And guess what happens? While you're sitting there taking time bull rushing with your head down, at the last minute you see the running back coming right by your hole, and now you try to disengage, and it's too late. Your timing is off. Again, you know, this is something that, that comes with him being so young. You know what I mean? He's a big guy, but yet he's still a baby, man. Um, I like to see him bring his feet. You know what I mean? Bring your feet. Follow through, man. I mean, you can whip that guy's ass all day long, man. Okay, so again, keep you cannot, you cannot get off of blocks with your head down. All right, and you can't get off him when the running back is running past. You stick your arm out and think you're just going to catch cloth. That's not going to happen. We've seen that too many times last year where our defensive line just thought they were going to catch cloth and just drag a running back down. But, again, man, it's just I'm not tripping off it, okay? I'm, I'm not tripping off this. It's something that he'll learn um, when he gets uh, uh, older. And I think with Matt Rule and Phil Snow, I think they'll bring the best out of him. I ain't 
got a good, good, good brain. So one of my little pet peeves with him is he flies up field. He takes himself out of plays. If you look on your screen right here, again, man, this is a, uh, a defensive coordinator's call where they have the defensive lineman slide into the left or slant into the left, and he takes himself out of the play. Okay, again, man, I, I'm a guy who believes in you, you pop, get that extension, find the ball. You, there's no need for you to try a pass rush move on second down. Okay, you're dipping and ripping, which is one of the one of my favorite. Excuse me, on first down, one of my favorite pass rush moves is dipping and rip, and you're doing up. You're trying to fly up field on first down. On first down, you should be expecting run. So in my mind, as a defensive lineman, I'm planting my fat ass right there, and I'm extending your ass. I'm looking for the ball, and once I see them fullbacks and guards pulling at me, I'm fighting to get off that shit. I am not performing a pass rush move to rush up field on first down to create a lane to give you four or five extra yards. So, again, these some things you need to work on. I mean, they happen occasionally. Well, they happen a good bit, man. He's young. He's young. I'm not I'm not too hard on I still want this guy. Just some, some growing pains with him. And I think, like I said, with Matt Rule, Phil Snow, they'll get him right, man. They'll get him right. Why so serious? So, let's talk about his pass rush. On third down, man, he's a liability if you leave him in there. First, second down, I think he's a hell of a guy to uh, plug up that run. If you look up at your screen right here, you'll see, again, this is a little uh, frustrating, you know what I mean? One-on-one, as big, as, as strong, and as quick as he is, you know what I mean? You would expect for him to, you know, just, you know, be able to get a hell of a pass rush. But even with one-on-one -on -one blocking right here, seems like he struggles to get off of it, man. Which is weird. Like I said, it's weird to me because when he comes to run defense, he has a quick get-off, man. But when it comes to uh, that, that same kind of pass rush, I mean, once he once his, once the offensive lineman withstands that initial surge, they nullify his ability to get upfield and get a pass rush. And this is something that happens frequently with him. But uh, again, I'm okay with it. I don't need listen. I told you I don't need no hybrid defensive tackle playing linebacker and defensive defensive tackle. That's silly to me. Have his ass play the run, fine. Get him out at third down. Bring him, bring in the person that could get it done. You know what I mean? So. Again, I'm cool with this, but he, don't expect for him to be a hell of a pass rusher. He only had three and a half sacks last year. Mom. That's right. That's right. Call for your mama. So let's go back to what I said before. He does a great job of working back the plays. If you look up on your screen right here, they run a stunt. And again, he tries to get to the outside. He's no avail on the outside tackle, but he keeps his eye on the quarterback and he works his way back to the ball. I can work with a guy like that. He's not the not the most athletic. He has some skill to him, you know what I mean? Doesn't bend very well on his hip, but he has a heart. He fights back. I mean, I've seen this several times throughout this game. He was able to make plays on the ball because of just simply working his way back to the ball. And I, I appreciate that right there. But I mainly would have him in the inside. I want to have him out there on the edge. It's too much of a liability well, uh, when it comes to quicker uh, tackles and stuff like that. But I would rather have him in the inside where he does his dirty work. But again, nice way to work your way back to the ball. Dog's gotta eat, right? So last but not least, you're gonna see in this last play again what I've been saying, his quickness, his strength. He's gonna be able to fire up field, but guess what? He's not gonna be able to make the play. If you look up on your screen right here, there's a reason why I say you need to get extension first before you disengage. Fire enough field will get you good. I mean, listen, you'll make some plays on it, okay? You'll, you'll make some highlight tapes, you'll look good on there. But again, man, there's no excuse for this. You're in dead the right position on this running back. And because you're firing up field with your head down and you can't disengage. You cannot disengage with your head down. You don't get extension. Now you're reaching, again, you're reaching out trying to tackle the running back with one arm. Okay, so again, I mean, it's not a big concern to me. Just a little raw, a little young. Um, but again, man, he, he has to clean that up at the next level. Okay, don't allow offensive linemen into your chest. That's what I was taught. Um, when you get a chance to make the play, extend them. You're six foot three, extend their asses away from you so you can get separation. He does it backward. He, he, he fires into them with his quickness and lowers his shoulder and tries to shrug them off. See, when you lower your shoulder and you go into offensive lineman chest, all you're doing is giving them more shit to grab. Okay, that's why you don't lower your shoulder and try to push them with your shoulder. Get your fucking arms in there, extend him out, fight off of the extension, Make the play. You lower your shoulder, you're giving them some more target, and you end up on your back like you did there. Okay, so again, things to work on. Not a major concern. I like them, guys. I want them, guys. I want them. I, I want them. I want them. Not at number seven. Not at number seven. 
We must, and we will, and we should trade back to get this guy. Oakland, here we come. Las Vegas, here we come. Let's make that move. I'm your host, Zach Running. God's also not the big cat. My cool cat with the balls up. If you rock with the big cat, tell me what you think about this guy, man. The big cat is drunk in love with him. Hey, Ross, look, I'm with you, man. If I had some kind of real fucking pool, I would make a call and get your ice in Carolina immediately. I don't. I need your help, cool cats. Let's make some noise on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Let this organization know we got to have Mr. Blacklock. We've been st stifled at the running run defense. We haven't, ever been, we haven't been able to do shit for the last two years when it comes to run defense. No disrespect to K. Could you imagine him next to KK and KK teaching him all that he knows? And then let's add a Brian Burns on the outside. Let's add a, a, another defense end on the outside. Ooh, wee. You smell something? You smell kind of funky. Oh, that was the quarterback that just shit itself. Look, man, we got to make it happen. I'm your host, El Grande Gato. Make sure you tune into the podcast. Follow me on Anchor FM, Spotify, the whole nine. Subscribe to the channel. Let's make Mr. Rock Blacklock happy, man. Bring him to Carolina. Let's get up out of here. Let the church say, tap. Yeah. I'm gonna get